So now what I'd like to do is invite up our chief technical officer, Jeff Kowalski, to talk about how today's technologies are helping designers, engineers, and architects amplify their work and do great design. Please welcome Jeff Kowalski. Hey, thanks, Carl. <laughs> you know, technologies have always amplified our capabilities. That's pretty much why we create them, right? But some do much more than that. They actually allow us to see the world in a whole new way and do things that were previously impossible. To put it another way, we could say that sometimes a change in tool set due to a transformative technology can inspire a change in mindset. And in a minute, I'm going to talk about just such a technology, one called infinite computing. But first, I want to talk about the power of transformative technologies in general. And I'm going to use an example we're all very familiar with, the microscope. Before the invention of the microscope, there was an entire world we just couldn't see right under our noses. When that microscope gave us the ability to peer into that world, the new knowledge we gained fueled an explosion of innovation in physics, biology, chemistry, and medicine. The microscope caused us to see the universe and ourselves differently, and those new perspectives became critical parts of the constantly evolving body of human knowledge. It was a change in tool set that enabled and inspired a change in mindset, a truly transformative technology. Now, those kind of technology shifts and mindset shifts don't come very often, but when they do, the possibilities are virtually limitless. And here's the good news. We've got one with us here today. It's infinite computing, and it offers everyone in this room some truly mind-blowing opportunities. Infinite computing is, first of all, about a tool set change, because computing is now becoming basically infinite, free, and ubiquitous. It's a flexible resource there to help us with our work and our jobs. But it's also about a mindset change from scarcity and conservation to abundance and almost wasting computing power because there's no need to conserve it anymore. Now we can create amazingly robust explorations, brilliant visualizations, precise simulations, much more cheaply and easily. But to do so, we have to realize that we can do so, even given the realities and constraints of our current jobs and companies. Like the microscope, infinite computing is unleashing a wave of innovation, and you are perfectly positioned to ride that wave and contribute with innovations of your own. And when we think about the complex, urgent challenges that the world is facing today, I think that this change in mindset about technology and design is coming at the perfect time because it can help us look at and solve these problems in new ways. To paraphrase Einstein, you can't solve a problem using the same mindset that created the problem. So now let's look at infinite computing and its radical effect that it's having on our world, the world of design. Infinite computing is changing the nature of computing and therefore design in three very important ways, making computers more aware, more powerful, and more accessible. Let's talk about computers becoming more aware and why that's important. Computers often need data about what exists in the real world to do their work. Unfortunately, we're usually the ones that have to give them that real world data. This takes a lot of our time, right? And it also limits the computer's effectiveness because the computer really isn't much help to us until it's fully up to speed about our project and the real world conditions. But today, we're able to create a stronger connection between the real world and the computer, making the computer more aware of the real world conditions. Over the past few years at AU, we've been talking a lot to you about blurring the lines between the real world and the digital world with the technologies that we've shown like laser scanning and photogrammetry. And now let's look at a couple of developments over the past year that have helped us get even better at connecting that virtual world and the real world. 
let's say we've already done some reality capture and acquired a point cloud of a real world environment. Now in the past, to get the, to the bare earth terrain mesh that we want, we'd need to manually identify and remove objects that we didn't want our model, like trees, shrubs, and existing buildings. But now the computer can automatically recognize patterns in the point cloud and automatically classify objects and remove the ones that we don't want, getting us to our terrain mesh much more quickly. Today, reality capture can take us even further and faster because the design software is smart enough to give us things like reference geometry, planes, surfaces, and intersection points, for example, that we need based on the laser scan. Here, the computer has become aware enough of what we want to do to treat this raw collection of points as actual geometry. And as a result, we go from the real world to the digital world very quickly and very easily. Now, very often, the thing we want to model already exists in the real world. And when that's the case, we shouldn't have to start from scratch, especially when something is complex like this human face, in this case, our friend Tia here. You might think this is a simple photograph, but really, as we rotate around, you see it's a 3D model of Tia's face composed of different digital photographs taken from various angles. And these photos are analyzed to find coincident points, create a point cloud, like in the previous examples. But as you see here, we also get a mesh representing the geometry of her face. Now, how long would it take you to model something this complex from scratch? A long time. But now, with some simple photographs from an ordinary camera, we have a much richer starting point more quickly. And we could do the same thing, of course, for buildings, machines, and products. If you want to see more about this particular technology, I invite you to go down to the show floor Check out the Autodesk Labs booth, well, they'll turn your head into a 3D model if you so like. So we've gotten better about the real world information and getting that real world information into the computer and into the design process. What about once something is already built? Well, now we can use sensors to monitor the performance of our building or our product after it's actually created. Let's say you're the owner of a large commercial office building. Now, traditionally, your facilities manager was, was like a doctor without x-rays, no diagnostic tools. He could respond to some symptoms, like my office is freezing or there's no electricity on the second floor, but he couldn't proactively monitor and optimize the building's performance. But when we put sensors in the building, energy, environment, or here, occupancy, and connect them to the digital model, we give our facilities manager a constant stream of real-time and historic information so that he can optimize the performance. He's like a doctor who now has x-rays and CAT scans and other tools that he needs to do his job. And he can now proactively fine-tune the performance of the building based on real-world conditions and dynamics. So we've talked about improving the design process by strengthening that connection between the real and the virtual world. Another way to do this is to allow you to do your work and access your data wherever it makes the most sense. Something mobile devices connected to the cloud have made much easier. Sometimes, where you are working is critically important. If you're at a job site and you're looking at a building, you're getting real-time, first-hand information about that project. But when you can also access your digital data about the project from that job site, that's even more powerful. Now with AutoCAD WS, your drawings are made available to you in the field. And you can even do markups that are immediately seen by the people back in the office. You've extended the reach of your office into the field, where you and your team can observe things as they occur, where they occur. The value of having your access to your data on site also extends to the installation, operation, and maintenance of things that already exist. Instead of using large, potentially out-of-date paper manuals, we can now access rich 3D data in the cloud via a mobile device. Using Autodesk Inventor Publisher, we can look at things in 3D, watch animations of the assembly, and call up spec sheets and step-by-step -step instructions. And we don't have to think twice about whether or not we have the latest information or not, because we're always connected to the latest digital model. Having computing power everywhere connects us to our data when we have to be somewhere specific, 
but it also lets us ignore location when it isn't important. Traditionally, we, you know, we've had to always go to the computer, to the software where it was installed and that, where that data was just to get our work done. Infinite computing extends everywhere, and it allows us to work from wherever we can connect. Autodesk Twitch allows you to access Autodesk products with no downloads and from any web browser. And this is very much different from taking things with you on your laptop. It's about accessing data from any connected computer. Because computing is everywhere and accessible anywhere, we now have tremendous power at our disposal. You know, traditionally, our projects had to be in the box in the sense that they had to scale down to whatever computers we actually owned, right? But now we can break our projects out of the box because we don't have to own all that computing power ourselves. We just have to be able to get to it. We can move beyond the limitations of our desktops and into the power of the cloud by computing things either locally or in the cloud based on whatever makes the most sense. One example of this new computing power is high quality rendering, which is computationally very expensive and usually requires lots of hardware. You know, last year at AU, we showed you Project Showroom, which was about high, high quality rendering in the cloud using a cluster of machines, all working in parallel to create images like this kitchen. But back then, that high quality rendering engine was really just tied to a few specific kitchens. This year, you can use Autodesk's online design tool, HomeStyler, to connect to that same high quality rendering engine and create your own interior. You just place a camera in your design and you get a nice image all from a browser-based app that doesn't require you to own any advanced hardware.